I welcome you to this moment around God's Word and prayer. I don't know about you, but I've been enjoying this journey through the book of Jeremiah. We have about a week and a half left. Today we come to Jeremiah 19. And this chapter reminds me of a question that John Wesley used to ask the young preachers that he was training. He'd send them out to preach. And then they would come back and he would always ask them two questions. Number one, did anybody repent and get saved? And number two, if not, did anybody get angry? And if they answered no to both those questions, no, nobody repented and nobody got angry, then he considered them not worth their salt as preachers. Well, Jeremiah is going to answer no to the first question and yes to the second question. In fact, nobody ever really repents of the 40 years that Jeremiah preaches. Can you imagine that? That's not good church growth. That would be one discouraged pastor. But Jeremiah, um, he, uh, he, he, he says, uh, he, he tells us about the message that, that he, God kept giving him to preach. This is what the Lord Almighty, verse 15 of Jeremiah 19, this is what he says. Listen, I, I'm going to bring to this city and all the villages around it every disaster that I pronounced against them. Why? Because they were stiff-necked and would not listen to my words. This is... This is God's mercy to us, that he would actually preach judgment. Most preachers are very reluctant these days in a culture that says, love me and don't judge me, ever to warn people about God's judgment, rather encourage them with God's love. But this, you know, if we love people enough, um, we're going to, out of the mercy that God has for us, just, just not giving, just calling Jeremiah, go preach it again. Sure, they reject you, go preach it again. But when you preach a message like that, uh, you're either going to repent or you're going to get angry. And uh, they didn't repent. Instead, they got angry. So verse 1 of the next chapter, chapter 20, when the priest, Pashur, the son of Immer, the official in charge of the temple of the Lord, when he heard Jeremiah preaching this way, prophesying these things, he had Jeremiah the prophet beaten and put in stocks at the upper gate of Benjamin in the Lord's temple. That is not a pleasant experience. We don't know how they beat him. It could have been 39 lashes, or it could be they just punched and kicked him till he was a heap on the ground. And then they put him in stocks, which was both very uncomfortable and publicly humiliating. And so Jeremiah has something to say about this, about this to the Lord. In verse 7, Lord, you deceived me, and I was deceived. You overpowered me, and you prevailed, because I'm ridiculed all day long, and everyone mocks me. In essence, Jeremiah was saying, God, when it came to this calling stuff to be a prophet, you oversold me. You didn't tell me about this part. I mean, the only message you give me is a message of, of judgment. They don't repent. All they do is get angry. And look at what it's doing to me. I mean, all day long, I'm ridiculed. Everybody mocks me, and I just got beat up. And whenever I speak, I cry out proclaiming violence and destruction. Like, you won't give me any other message. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. This is not a happy prophet. And there's immense pressure today, especially with as much censorship of free thinking and politically correct ideology. I mean, there is immense pressure growing, even for us here in America, as well as other parts of the world that are often more restricted than us. Immense pressure to hold back on the word of God. Uh, we don't want to get censored. We don't want to get canceled. I, I've heard of people who have literally in America lost their jobs just because they liked a political uh, 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 post on Facebook. I mean, I mean, it's scary to say what you think these days. But God just kept propping Jeremiah back up and saying, I love people so much to not warn them. And this is an incredible message to us. You know, God hasn't oversold any of us in our calling for him. He just calls us to be faithful. While we're never to be unloving in the way we speak, God's love for others demands that we also are not hesitant to speak the truth in love in those moments when he asked us to. Whether there's a threat of being canceled or criticized or not, may God give us the courage to always speak his word. I want to pray for you to that end. I pray, Father, for that great love for people. Lord, that, that we will speak, uh, no matter what it may cost us. We may, 
be rejected. We may be made fun of, especially when we share the gospel with people these days. But I pray we'll love people enough to share the truth with them. And I pray you'll give us courage and give us grace. And we thank you. We can always be honest with you about the pain of what it costs us. But that at the same time, you don't let us off from your calling for us to be your voice into our world. So with courage, we rededicate ourselves to that end. In Jesus' name, amen.